As part of our coverage of Be Quiet's new Sounding 4 lineup, except for that one, I, I will deny its existence until my last breath. As part of this accumulation of independent reviews, here is still one model missing. The regular, non-high-speed, non-pro Be Quiet Sounding 4 in its 120mm form factor. So for today, let's have a closer look at this one and see if there is any benefit for going for that one compared to the quicker spinning alternative. But before we start, unlike how it is with Be Quiet's Lightwing series, there there is literally zero optical or feature difference between a Silent Wing 4 PVM and a Silent Wing 4 PVM high speed. Hell, as far as the blade design is concerned, there is also no difference to a Pro. Just look at that. Which one is the PVM and which one is the high speed? Wrong. Both are high speed. Zero difference. It's just the motor and that one is invisible, so if you need to keep them apart, you really need to rely on the sticker in the back. But because of this fact, which I am quite happy about actually, I can now try to save some of that leftover sanity that I still have left and one-to-one -one repurpose the explanation that I have already written for the high-speed version. Meet the slowest version of the regular non-pro Silent Ring 4 line, the Be Quiet Silent Ring 4 120mm PVM. Unlike the previous generation Silent Ring 3s, the new 4th generation spins at max 16 RPM while pushing 48.7 CFM at 1.79mm of H2O. Compared to the older one, this actually turned out to be interesting because while it is still spinning 150 RPM quicker, we lost 1.8 CFM at the exact same static pressure. Ignoring the RPM differences for a second, the most important change comes in form of the new wing design. For like I don't know, the last two decades, Be Quiet had a wing design with seven very big but just slightly bent wings. Although this was very good at the time, with advanced cases, thicker radiators, heat sinks and the addition of air filters, the efficiency of that design started to decline over time. Sure, Be Quiet started to implement changes like indentation, some weird octagonal inlet designs and all sorts of different things, but on benchmark charts they just didn't seem to be able to keep up with the competition in areas other than inside a case with a very very good airflow design. So a change was due. Well, now we have a 9 wing design with a lot smaller wings but bent in a very aggressive way clearly aimed to push the air a lot harder. Additionally, Be Quiet also ditched the octagonal thing for a regular round inlet and outlet and then enlarged the central area with an all new matte black logo slapped on top which by the way I believe looks awesome. How all of these changes will end up in a real world environment test we will see then later on in the benchmark section. But before we finish up the fan itself, although there were many changes made, the packaging really ain't one of them. The Silent Ring 4s come in an almost exact same package as the older ones, a bunch of imagery and some short specs. Inside we'll find two separate boxes, one with which will contain the fan and the other one with a bunch of accessories. Again, similarly to the older Silent Ring 3s, the new 4s have a separate pair of mounting edges for regular fan screws. But unlike the original ones, removing them is as easy as pressing the edges with two fingers and pulling them away. And then just press the new ones on. Very very easy, not at all hurtful and you can now install the fans using a regular fan screw on top of a whatever you want. You can also slap it on top of a radiator, the holes are, are there. The mounting edge system that comes pre-installed are the pushpin edges. These can be used by simply positioning the fan wherever you want to install it, in, in the case mind you, and pressing in the pin from the other side. Very easy and they keep up surprisingly well I must say. As a small detail which is very poorly explained, like I saw it on some PDF months ago and I never re-found it but it is there, the pushpin system is reversible but the two sides are not identical. One of them is marked with an S and the other one with an L. Though I'm not really sure what this means, the L side has a tiny piece of rubber sticking out. Meaning that if you would install the fan in the back of the case with the L going to the back or touching the case, how it is installed by default, you would end up having a very tiny gap between the fan and the case. Then by reversing those, you would take away that gap and make the fan completely stick to the mesh filter. Now although the gap will have absolutely zero performance difference, it can change a lot 
regarding noise. The best example for this would be a noise blocker fan, which is an amazing fan, but press it against a anything mesh-like and it will produce a horrible sound. Therefore, also with noise blockers, you get that, that kind of robot knob that you can press onto the fan screw holes to have that gap. Basically, this means if you experience horrible sounds, make sure that the L part is touching the case so you have that gap. In case that your fan wing design combined with the how, how the mesh structure is cut, behind it is not creating that noise. As a last mini point, we have the 4-pin PVM cable that the fan is powered by. It looks identical to the previous version at 500mm and some random sleeve on there, but considering that we now know what Be Quiet is capable of with our Pro line, I'm kind of sad that those are just average. They are okay, but the Pro line is just so good that this kind of looks bad. Whew, I, I kind of get the feeling that I said exactly the same thing like 20 minutes ago. Anyway, with the fan covered, let's now go to the benchmark section. While letting the Be Quiet Sounding 4 PVM120 spin at its max 600 RPM, it managed to keep the CPU at 58 degrees C above ambient. This puts it slightly ahead of other case fans, like for example a Galit Stella, a Asia Horse 9002 Pro, or a Noctua NF-S12A. Compared to the quicker 2500 RPM high speed version, the temperature fell from 43 degrees C above ambient 16 degrees down. Compared to other fans spinning at a similar speed, we un unfortunately don't have many of them. But for example, an F12 spinning at 250 RPM less was 5 degrees C behind, while the Be Quiet Lightwing spinning at 100 RPM faster was about 2 degrees C in front. So far so good. The Sounding 4 regular is behaving like the average case fan. N nothing wrong about that as long as it has a good noise to performance ratio. Compared to some of the fans we just mentioned, the Sounding 4 regular performed well. Uh, Lightwing, S12B, Case Flex, Stella, 9002 Pro, F12, S12A, none of these even stood a chance. To be sure that we are all on the same page here, you want to be as close as possible to this edge of the graph. This isn't really <laughs> really funny anymore. Now given that the Silent Wing is spinning 400 RPM faster than everything on the list except for the light wings, this is still a very very good result for its use case as a slow spinning case fan. Actually, we had a lot of issue even measuring the, the noise level of this thing. Like at all. At 600 RPM, this thing was so freaking quiet, it's, it's just uncanny. So, in our opinion, as far as just case fan use cases are concerned, this thing is absolutely amazing. However, I think the fan is useless. He and, and hear me out on this one. This is the noise to performance graph compared to the high speed version and the pro line. Of course, each and every one of them follows somewhat the same pattern, including some measuring point tolerances. So no, there is no noise to performance difference between a regular PVM version and a high speed version. And that makes sense, it's the same fan just spinning at another speed. And if you limit down the quicker one, you will end up having the slower one. Both of these have the same MSRP of 2390. And when I now would have the option of getting an amazing noise to performance ratio or get the exact same noise to performance ratio, but with all of this headroom, including new use cases like heatsink or radiators or heavy filters, why would I ever choose the first one? I, I, don't, I just don't get it. If you would buy a high speed first, Version for the exact same price, turn down the fan speed to 50-60%, you have a regular PVM version. I just don't get it. Open that application, set that slider, and you are done. Why is that so much of a problem? Now ignoring my tantrum, it's an amazing fan, probably one of the best you could get right now for case airflow usages, but the high speed fan is just as good with extra stuff. Get the high speed one, pretend like the PVM version doesn't exist and just go for the quicker one. It makes zero sense to take the 1600 RPM version, even if it's an amazing fan. Just take the 2500 RPM version, it's better. But okay, this should be it for Be Quiet and their all new Silent Wing 4 PVM. At this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending them over. And of course, we will now continue to cover with the 140mm lineup because there are still four fans waiting. But until then, have a look at our take on the Pro lineup. I really loved it. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to start. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy Darknet Medicine to add the PVM version to the list of forgotten fans. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.
Bye-bye.